nothing really stays with you like a good scare at the movies. Hey guys, Noah from Watch Mojo here, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movies of the decade. For this list, we'll be looking at the very best horror movies released between 2010 and 2019. However, we will be excluding movies that are overt comedies or thrillers. Number 10, It. Adapting the works of Stephen King is no small feat, but with 2017's It, filmmaker Andy Muschietti did the source material proud. Bill Skarsgård was perfectly horrifying as Pennywise, bringing the infamous dancing clown to life with a sinister flair and manic energy to great effect. You'll float down here. We'll float down here. Yes, we do. Though it relied on jump scares, the film delivers on the horror front without compromise, and in no small part thanks to the looming sense of dread that Pennywise brings to the town of Derry. However, this horror film is also elevated by the excellent performances of its young ensemble cast, and that's what really earns this film a spot on our list. Seriously though, clowns are still the stuff of nightmares. Beep, beep, Richie. Number 9, Happy Death Day. Who could have guessed that the basic premise of Groundhog Day would translate so well to the horror genre? The thing is, with the time loop plot device in play, the filmmakers easily could have coasted by on this concept alone, churning out an otherwise painfully generic and uninspired film. But they didn't. Far from being your run-of-the-mill teenage gore fest, Happy Death Day is a smart and self-aware slasher that does a remarkably solid job of deconstructing the genre. In this sense, it feels like a spiritual successor to Scream. There are plenty of laughs, but these thankfully don't come at the cost of genuine scares. And while it might not be a perfect film, it scores a whole bunch of bonus points for creativity. What do you want? Why are you doing this to me? Number 8, The Cabin in the Woods. Yes, this film at times feels more comedic than overtly horrific, but we'd like to remind you that it's still got some solid scary moments. What really earns this movie a spot on our list, however, is how deftly it manages to subvert expectations. And really, isn't that the hallmark of a great horror film? The Cabin in the Woods initially comes across like any old supernatural or slasher teen horror flick, but below this so-called cabin lies an elaborate government conspiracy, one that makes the whole thing not only feel like a brilliant love letter to the horror genre, but a few dozen different movies fighting one another for screen time. It's chaotic, brilliantly crafted, and just a whole lot of fun. Yes, you did. Yes, you had zombies. But this is zombie redneck torture family, see? They're entirely separate species. It's like the difference between an elephant and an elephant seal. Number 7, It Follows. This past decade has felt like a renaissance for horror movies, especially those centering on the misadventures of teens. Rather than exploitative slashers with paper-thin plots, we've been treated to some carefully crafted and effective entries like It Follows. Never go into a place that doesn't have more than one exit. It's very slow, but it's not done. There's still plenty of teenage lovemaking, sure, but there are also deeper questions about the anxieties of teen sexuality and STIs. It follows as an impressively shot film featuring some creative wide-angle cinematography and a clear homage to horror filmmakers like John Carpenter. The movie's further amplified by Micah Monroe's performance in the lead role. Ultimately, It Follows is just a really compelling horror film that operates on both a supernatural and psychological level. Plus, it has a great score. Number 6, The Witch. Period piece horror films are hard to pull off. In order to really get under a viewer's skin, we need to somehow relate to the setting and the experiences of the characters on the screen. We are children of sin all. Yet I tell thee I have raised up no witch in this house. Let us pray. Then we need fear nothing. It's safe to say that most cinema goers aren't a farming family living in New England in the 1630s. Yet filmmaker Robert Eggers managed to craft a deeply unnerving film, one that scares with ambience, psychological dread, and off-screen threats rather than cheap scares. Simply put, The Witch is terrifying, captivating, and impressive all at once. And with Eggers' follow-up film, The Lighthouse, similarly blowing critics away, this young director seems poised to bring us quality horror films for decades to come. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. 
Number five, A Quiet Place. Who knew John Krasinski had it in him? Best known as the lovable Jim Halpert from The Office, Krasinski has proven himself to be quite versatile in the years since, but no move has been more surprising than his foray into directing horror. Ah! A Quiet Place takes a solid premise, a world overrun by blind monsters who hunt via heightened sense of hearing, and mines it for all it's worth. The sound design is used masterfully, drawing you into the world of the film and making you fear the slightest pin drop. Krasinski and his cast, including his spouse Emily Blunt, all deliver committed performances that serve as the film's beating heart. You grow attached to the Abbott family, and this attachment creates real and terrifying stakes. Number 4. The Babadook Parenting can be a scary thing, especially when you're doing it alone. But when trying to raise a child while simultaneously navigating the grief of losing a partner, well, that must be downright maddening. His name is Mr. Babadook, and this is his book. A rumbling sound, then three sharp knocks. Ba -ba -ba -duk -duk -duk. These are the core themes at work in this remarkable horror film written and directed by filmmaker Jennifer Kent. As single mother Amelia Vanek, Essie Davis does an incredible job conveying the deep exhaustion felt by her character. This is a thoughtful, provocative, and thoroughly human horror film that also has one of the most original and unconventionally scary movie monsters in recent memory. Director William Friedkin, director of The Exorcist, went so far as to say that he had, quote, never seen a more terrifying film. <laughs> Number 3, The Conjuring. After unleashing not one, but two major horror franchises upon the world with Saw and Insidious, filmmaker James Wan delivered one of the greatest haunted house films in decades. Unlike most of the movies on our list, The Conjuring doesn't necessarily feel like it pushes the boundaries of the genre. In fact, it's decidedly old school. What makes it so worthwhile, however, is its attention to detail. It's an incredibly well-crafted and expertly paced film with well-developed characters that we really care about. She made me do it. Juan's knack for building tension and breaking it with terrifying scares is a testament to his horror movie experience. In short, it's the perfect supernatural horror film, one with superb scares and a whole lot of replay value. Number 2, Hereditary. This is the sort of movie that people were praising and warning each other about in the same breath. A deeply disturbing supernatural and psychological horror film, Hereditary follows a family haunted by the death of their grandmother, but it's so much more than that. Not only is it extremely unsettling to watch, it's also chock full of unforgettable moments that'll most likely give you nightmares. It's not a pleasant viewing experience, but there's no denying that the film is a true work of art, both narratively and visually. While Hereditary might feel like the more focused film, director Ari Aster's 2019 follow-up Midsommar is similarly effective, and deserves a nod for managing to be so deeply unnerving, despite its more colorful setting. Okay, so I know I wasn't the only one at the office who was a little bummed out that Hereditary was only a number two pick and not our number one pick. Is that a hot take? I, I don't even know anymore at this point. Anyways, see if you can guess what our number one pick will be during these honorable mentions. So you never think about it then? Think about what? Being the girl. police are coming back. They've come and gone. Well, that's what concerns us, man. Just want that gun out of the picture. Il y en a déjà qui veut abandonner. Hey, t'as passé le concours pour faire plaisir à tes parents. Non, mais moi je crois que c'était fini. Mais tu sauras bien assez vite quand ça sera fini, mon vieux. Allez, rentre dans le rang. Rentre dans le rang. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Get Out We're definitely witnessing a new generation of horror auteurs leaving their mark on the genre. But arguably no horror filmmaker working today is more exciting than Jordan Peele. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. His highly anticipated second feature, Us, solidified his status as one of the most influential voices in the genre, but it's his directorial debut, Get Out, that we believe to be the finest horror film of the decade. Get out! Yo! Yo! Chill, man! Get out! Chill! 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 Wholly original and terrifying in the most unexpected of ways, Get Out delivers scathing yet profound social critiques. It's particularly effective at highlighting liberal racism. Not only that, but Get Out is also a tightly crafted film, expertly shot and well-paced. Add to that a uniquely unnerving ambience and great performances all around, and you've got a modern horror masterpiece. I mean, I told you not to go in that house. So what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with our number one pick? What was your favorite horror movie of the decade? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like and subscribe to Watch Mojo, and click here for more awesome content.